Na tým hned svou rastu. Vet du vad den kallas? De gamla kallade den varje timme. Det är timmen där de flesta människor dör. De flesta barnen föds. Det är nu som mardrömmarna kommer till oss. Wolf is a drama horror film that's written and directed by the legendary Ingmar Bergman. They came out in 1968. So, Hour of the Wolf is a $50 patron request that comes from no other than Perry Perez himself. And um, I think y'all could have guessed that considering the fact that the man bought the Bergman box set and is probably the biggest Bergman fan that I know. And I still at this point have only dipped my toes into his work. Um, I've only seen The Seventh Seal, Persona, and Wild Strawberries, and even though those are all great films, especially a film like Persona, um, Ingmar Bergman has made well over 40 films, which is still insane to really think about, but the fact that I've only seen now only four of his films um, is just a testament to how little I've really dived into this guy's work. And um, I heard that Hour of the Wolf is the only, or at the very least, one of the only attempts of him trying to craft a horror film. I'm just going to throw a hot take out there. I actually like this film a little bit better than The Seventh Seal. And that's saying a lot because I really like The Seventh Seal. And a lot of people consider that to be one of his greatest works. And I hardly really ever hear about Hour of the Wolf that often. And just the fact that he's hardly really ever attempted horror. And the one time that he does just really resonated with me and I thought it was incredibly effective. Um, just kind of makes me sad in the sense that I really wish he tried more of a hand at the horror genre because I feel like he could have given us a lot of brilliant entries into the genre. And um, I think that in a lot of ways, this is a brilliant film. Um, you have two stars that were in his previous films, The Seventh Seal, which is Max von Sido, And then you have Liv Ullman, who you know most people know from Persona. And um, they're both excellent in this film. And it's kind of crazy that both of these actors are in this film because you have Liv Ullman that was in Persona, Max von Sydow that was from The Seventh Seal. And this film reminds me of like a combination of both The Seventh Seal and Persona. The Seventh Seal, mostly because of the atmosphere, has this really gothic element to this film that reminded me a lot of The Seventh Seal and Persona. More of the thematic approach because this film... In my opinion, first of all, it's about a lot of things. Um, this film throws a lot of different character themes at you, a lot of philosophical themes at you. And that's mostly because this is a psychological film that is clearly very personal. Um, so far, out of every Bergman film I've seen, they seem like very personal films. I mean, the main character in the film, played by Max von Sydow, is a mentally tortured artist who, um, you know, lacks a lot of self-confidence, but the same way... Uh, can be very arrogant and selfish. But yes, as I just mentioned, this is a film that is incredibly thematic, and that's really a surprise to no one because it's Ingmar Bergman. But um, I feel like a lot of the themes that are present in Persona are also present here. They're just explored a bit differently. But yeah, this film explores isolation. It explores loneliness, uh, repression, guilt, the value and sacredness of intimacy and love. Um... It's about aristocracy. I mean, this film is about so many different things. And I really love the way that Bergman explores these things in this film. And really just his filmmaking in general. Because I feel like Bergman never treats his audience like they're dumb. And he's always he's always up to challenge his audience. And always looking for new ways to portray and capture things. Um, you know, that can get his audience to think about what they just saw, because this is a film that um, is going to confuse a lot of people. But Bergman knows just the right way to confuse his audience in a way that isn't going to frustrate them to the point of just giving up on the film and not caring to explore further, but confusing them in that sweet spot to where they're just dying to understand every little thing that this film threw at them. And it's a great discussion piece, because obviously this film is very interpretive, it is ambiguous, I mean, it does give you some things to latch on to, which is 
to me the best way you could go about it. But yes, it does leave plenty of things ambiguous and open to interpretation when it comes to what happened to certain characters, when it comes to what actually happened in the story, whether or not certain things were just illusions and um, the product and projection of a delusional person. And it's through this delusional lens and perspective that this film captures through the main character that it's able to express a lot of surrealistic tones. Um, there are plenty of scenes in this film that um, felt incredibly dreamlike and nightmarish. And it made it all the better because there's moments where, again, you cannot really tell what's taking place in reality or, you know, what's just going through the character's head. But there are times where, like, there's this one puppet show scene in this film that reminded me a lot of what I would see in a David Lynch film. And that scene in particular reminded me of something that I would see in Eraserhead or something. But that, that was the scene where you get this kind of first element of surrealism where you, you kind of, you kind of, you're kind of taken back for a second. And you think, okay, so this is going to be this kind of movie. And it really does end up being that kind of film. Because as I mentioned, this film's psychological. So it feels like this odd Freudian nightmare. And one other huge thing about this film that I really loved that I haven't talked about yet at all for some reason is the fact that this film appears to be timeless. Um, this is a film that could have been shot in the 1990s or even 2000s and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference really like only maybe few moments of special effects work you could be like okay that was that's an old film but other than that in terms of the aesthetic work in terms of the cinematography the sound design um i mean the lighting everything looks like it's captured so delicately it's certainly a stunning film to look at from start to finish and um i wouldn't go as far to say that it's on par with Persona in terms of visuals because Persona's, Persona's basically a visual marvel, not only with the cinematography, but through its editing choices, it's just on a whole other level. But this is still a gorgeous film to look at. And yes, as I mentioned, this is technically a horror film. At least it's in part a horror film. And um, it gets dark. I mean, beyond the fact that this film does have a gothic atmosphere and just a gothic approach to it because there's aspects of this film that reminds me of like a Dracula film or like a really classic monster film. Um, just beyond that fact, there are some really dark elements to this film. I think the darkest part of this film involves a scene that has to do with fishing and a child. For those who've seen it, know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, that's one of my favorite scenes in the film. Not only was it just an effective off-putting scene, but um, it says so much about the character and also has a lot to do with these psychological themes, as I was mentioning, it has to do with guilt, um, that has to do with repression, that has to do with isolating yourselves from society, and also has a lot to do with trauma as well, and um, is another reason why I do feel like this film does get quite dark. There's just one scene where the main character is relaying an old traumatic childhood memory where he was punished in a certain way. And that was an incredibly well-written scene, very well delivered, and I feel like in a way is connected to that dark fishing scene that I mentioned earlier. What I will say about this film though, is that it's a Bergman film, so there's gonna be some clear artistic liberties being taken. And there was a choice to have this kind of fourth wall break, especially during the climax of this film. And um, it's one of those things where I, I don't dislike it, but I'm not really huge on it either. And there are other fourth wall breaks in this film too that's involving Liv Ullman's character and I'm pretty much fine with those because I think it's it's incorporated pretty well into the film where it doesn't really take you out and there's like another layer to it to where it's not necessarily a fourth wall break but there is this one fourth wall break during the climax where I was like all right I I'm kind of on the fence about this one and there are moments where there's these certain philosophical concepts that are being delivered through the character's dialogue and most of the time, I think it works. And very few times, I feel like this is perhaps not genuinely coming from this character and it's coming from Ingmar Bergman himself. And that's one thing that, um, it's a, it's a similar small issue that I had with The Seventh Seal as well. But for me, I just think it's incredibly difficult to make it to where characters can deliver philosophical dialogue and make it seem natural and genuine to their character. Because most art filmmakers 
are deep thinkers and they think a lot about these philosophical concepts. So when you see characters say certain things, it's, it's hard, it's hard to truly believe that it's coming from these characters and not saying that it can't be done. Certified copy is one of my favorite films of all time. And that entire film was basically two characters having, having philosophical debates about art. But yet it was just so beautifully done to where I never really think that this is just coming from the director because the characters are so well embodied and so well written. And here they're also well embodied and very well written, but there's maybe a few moments where I feel like that's, that's coming from Bergman. But either way, I still really love this film. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this review, I do like this a bit better than The Seventh Seal. And I understand that's a hot take, but, um, it's a hot take that I'm proud of and willing to die on a hill for. So I'm going to give Hour of the Wolf a strong 8 out of 10. The Hour of the Wolf is the hour between night and dawn. Yeah, this is a wonderful film. I'm really glad that I watched it. I'm not sure if there's a single Criterion release for this film. Uh, more than likely not. I hope there is so I can buy it because God knows I won't be able to afford the Bergman box set. But anyways, I would love to hear everybody's thoughts on Hour of the Wolf. If you've seen it, please comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the film. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. I highly recommend it. And after you do watch it, report back and let me know your thoughts. But that's all I got to say. So if you really enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.